Welcome back, friends. Dan Vega here, and today I want to talk about dockerizing your Postgres database in a Spring Boot application. So if you've been following along lately, we've built a Spring Boot application that we're calling Spring Blog that we're going to use to deploy to different platforms. The idea behind this is, hey, we know how to build these applications, but how do we get them out in the wild? How do we get them into the promised land, which is known as production? So we have a bunch of different platforms that we're going to do this for. We've already done one. We started with Microsoft Azure, or more specifically, Azure Spring Apps. So if you're interested in watching that video, I will leave a link in the description below or a card up here. Uh, but now what I want to do is take a look at a problem that we found, and actually a user found it, um, on and left an issue on the Spring Blog repository. So if you're following along and you see things that you want added to this project, do the same thing. Leave an issue. We'll discuss it. We'll talk about it and, and hopefully get it put into the project. So what I want to do, jump over to the project and we'll talk about the issue that we found and how we can fix it uh, by using Docker today. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here we are in the Spring Blog application. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below for this repository. We're here on the master branch. If I open up the application, uh, just a normal Spring Boot application, uh, but let's go ahead and dive into the resources. And I have an application.yaml. And as you can see in here, we are connecting to a Spring data source with this specific URL. And this is actually pointing to the Azure database that I had set up. Now I've externalized the DB username and DB password uh, so that we can use those as environment variables later on. But again, this, is, this, this was just getting it out into production for a single platform. What we want to do is probably move this into a specific profile. So we may create an application-azure uh, YAML file that has just properties that are uh, specific to Azure, right? So then what we'll do is we need to set up a local database that we can use while we're testing this locally. Now, uh, asking someone to go ahead and install Postgres, configure it, start it up, make sure everything is working, and then run your application can be a little bit of a pain. So what we want to do is we want to include a Docker Compose file for any of the services that we may have included in our application so that they can run this one file, start up all the services uh, using Docker, and then just run the application locally. This is a much better approach and you know, I really get annoyed when I have to download a repository and like spend hours or a lot of time trying to set up different services. Like I just want to run the project and check it out. And obviously I can move to something different later, but this is a quick way to make sure that everybody can get started. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to extract this out into a new YAML file. And then we'll talk about how to set up Docker Compose here uh, in our application and use that so we have a local instance of Postgres running. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to extract this information. So let's take whatever this Spring data source is. We're going to get this out of here. We're going to create a new YAML file. So we're going to say new file. And we'll say application-azure.yaml. And then we'll just paste this in there. Uh, so that will give us everything we need for Azure. Now back in here, we have some, I think we've duplicated this. Let's fix this. I'm just going to pull this up under here. Uh, that looks good. So now what we need to do is we need to set up a dev profile. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and say uh, profiles active. And I'm going to say this is for dev. So we want you, you know, you could come in, uh, come up in here and, and go and edit your configuration and say every time you run this application, go ahead and use the dev profile. But again, making it easier for someone who just comes in and pulls down this project, I want to set an active profile right away. So if you just run this application, this is the profile that we're in. So to make that happen, we're going to create yet another YAML file. We love our YAML files application-dev.yaml and I joke but it would be really hard if we didn't have this ability to have different profiles like this. So this makes things really easy. So now what I need to do is set up a data source for my dev environment. So when I'm running locally what does the data source look like? Well I don't really have one yet, right? I need to somehow set up a data source locally. And again, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use Docker. So I have Docker running. Uh, it's running on my machine. I don't want to get too much into a specific 
this, you know, getting started with Docker, installing Docker, everything about Docker. So uh, hopefully you have a little bit of experience with Docker. If not, if you want a kind of one-on-one -on -one walkthrough of stuff like that, let me know. I'd be happy to add it to the channel. So with Docker running, I can come in here to my project and I can go ahead and say new file and I'm going to create a docker compose.yaml. So now that I have my docker compose file, I'm going to create this. Uh, so we're going to say version 3.8 and we need to start with some services. So I'm only going to have one service in here now. We're going to just call it db and that db is going to have an image. The image is going to be uh, Postgres and we need to give it a tag. In this case, I'm just going to say Alpine and that will give me uh, a kind of lightweight version of Postgres. So now I have a database. I got to set up some ports. And what I want to say is, hey, we want to go ahead and map 5432 to 5432. So host to local machine. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Next, we want to go ahead and set up uh, whoop, an environment. That's right. So then we're going to go ahead and set up. So this is essentially what you're doing if you're running Docker run from the command line. You set up some environment variables. Uh, we are passing those in through this environment key here. So we're going to say that the Postgres password is going to be password. We don't really care. Um, and then the Postgres DB, again, we don't really care, is going to be blog. So now with this in place, I can go ahead and run this from the command line. I can say Docker Compose up from the command line. Or if you're using something like IntelliJ, you should be able to make sure you spell stuff right first. Should be able to come in here and just go ahead and say, uh, go ahead and run this. And then if you look at this under Spring Blog, DB, we have our database system is ready to connect, accept connections. So we know that this is up and running now. So the only thing left to do is come back into our application dash dev .yaml and say spring data source. So data source dot username. So we're going to set a username of Postgres. We're going to set a password of password. And then we also need to set a URL. Oops, URL. That's the one I want. And in the URL, we're going to set this to JDBC PostgreSQL. And this will be localhost. And again, we set the port to 5432 and the database to be blog. Now, there's one more thing we need to do. Uh, we have a, if we go ahead and look in source, main, resources, we have the schema file. So this schema file will allow us to, this is a DDL script to create all of these different tables that we need in this application. Now this will run automatically in an embedded database mode. So if you have something like H2 on the class path, this is automatically going to run that script for you. When you're not using an embedded database, you need to specifically tell Spring, hey, go ahead and init that for me. And the way you do that is with the SQL init mode, and we're going to go ahead and set that to always. So now what happens is uh, what we're going to do is we have this application.yaml. This is configuration that is applicable to all environments. So uh, this will get run right away, and then it will say, hey, the active profile right now is going to be dev. Go ahead and load dev. Now we set up a data source. We're saying, hey, this is our local instance of Postgres running, and guess what? I need you for the init mode in SQL to always run that. So we're going to run that schema, create our schema locally, and then we can go ahead and add some data to it. So this should all work. Um, now, if you run the application without running the Docker Compose first, it's going to say, hey, I can't connect to that database. Uh, I can't find it. So make sure that you run the Docker Compose. Again, if you're not in IntelliJ, you can run this from the command line. Other IDs have ways to do this. Uh, but my, my Docker Compose is up and running. So what I want to do is come down to my application and go ahead and start it. And what do we have here? Failed to configure a data source. I must have typed something wrong. Let's look in here. Uh, JDBC, that is definitely not right. JDBC Postgres colon slash slash local host 543. Okay, let's try that. Uh, that must be wrong. Let's try and run this again. 
All right, and um, we are having some issues, uh, probably creating tables if they exist. So let's go ahead and update our schema here. We're just going to say, hey, create this table author if not exists. So we should go ahead and do that for each of these. Again, uh, something else that we're going to add to this, I have an issue for this in there already, is a fly, we're going to add Flyway for data, database migrations. Uh, but this is good enough for now. So let's go ahead and try and run this again. And okay, so we've started our application. We should be connecting to a local database. Let's go ahead and find out if that's true. All right, so we are up and running. Let's go ahead and see if we can connect to that database. So right now we have our one on Azure uh, up and running, but let's go ahead and add a new one. So we're gonna say PostgreSQL, and this is gonna be at localhost 5432. We have a username of Postgres, uh, password is password, and that should be the JDBC URL. So let's go ahead and hit apply and okay. And there's our blog database. And if we look under tables, we have author, comment, and post. So great. So now we have this. We can go ahead and say, uh, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and insert some data here. I'm not going to get into that right now. But now you can go ahead and uh, view your database right here in IntelliJ. Uh, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and uh, initialize some data right in your application. Uh, we could create a command line runner here. Uh, I've done this plenty of times. I'm not going to do it again here. But I think that's really what I wanted to show off. I wanted to talk about how you could set up a local Postgres database in your Spring Boot application using Docker Compose. Uh, we went ahead and added that into this application. We created a separate, separate profile for Microsoft Azure. Uh, we created a separate profile for dev. So now the default profile is dev, and it's going to use that local database. So I really hope uh, this was useful. I hope you learned something new today. If you did and you got some value out of this, do me a favor. Uh, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, friends, happy coding. Thank you.